Are you afraid of shooting your photos in manual mode? If you are, stay tuned right after the intro. What's up guys, Travis here and welcome back to my channel, another day, another video. Let's talk about camera basics today. I'm so excited to do this video today because I want to share some of my camera knowledge to those who wants to learn how to shoot it in manual to increase or to improve their skills in photography. I've seen a lot of people spending thousands of money on an expensive camera but all they do is use the auto mode to shoot their photos which is completely mind blown because imagine that you're only using 10% of your camera's ability to shoot those photos. I would rather use my mobile phone to shoot those photos and save a thousand dollars inside my pocket for food or for anything else. So today's video I'll be talking about the fundamentals of camera so you will basically know how manual mode works and I hope that by the end of this video you will not use auto mode to shoot your photos ever again. Okay, so there's three elements in your camera which you probably heard before which is the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Now these three elements work like a triangle, one depends on one another. If one of these elements is missing in your camera, you're definitely not able to shoot your photo. Okay, so now let's talk about shutter speed which is the first element that I want to talk about because I have an analogy to explain this which is the human eye because it acts exactly as the same as your camera. Except for human eye is organic and camera is technology. So let's take our human eyelid for an example of your camera shutter. Now if you have a ceiling fan or you have a table fan or you have a standing fan, I want you to look at it and now blink your eye rapidly. Now probably you will see something like that which you are able to capture the blades of your fan. Now I want you to stare at your fan again but now with your eyes wide open. Now you probably will just see the circle motion of the fan and you will not see those blades anymore. So as similar as your camera, if you're shooting like a bird flying in the sky and you want that bird to be completely still in your photo, you have to increase that shutter speed in order for you to capture those moving objects. Now if you've seen those beautiful photos with light trails or landscape photos with those water looks like cloud, if you know what I mean, what they did was they decreased the shutter speed and let those moving objects sway past for a few milliseconds before the shutter closes. And that's the way how you can create those motion effects into your photo. Now keep in mind that bumping up or down your shutter speed might increase or decrease the exposure of your photo. It is because the light is not fast enough to reach your camera sensor before the shutter closes. Okay, so I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Let's move on to aperture. Simple to say, the lower the aperture, the more blurness around the focus object. So the higher the aperture, you'll definitely get more focus point into your image, which is more clear. So now let's talk about how aperture will affect the exposure of your image. However, when you lower down your aperture, it means that you're opening up the iris inside your lens to let more light get into your camera sensor so you will definitely see an increasement of exposure into your image. So if you close down the iris, you will have a decreasement of exposure into your image. So now that's a fun fact for you guys, our human eye works exactly the same as your camera's lens. So if you're in a dark room, our eyes tend to dilate, so more lights are able to travel into our eyes for us to see our surrounding. Now if you're in a bright room or a brighter area, our eyes tend to constrict to protect your eyes from those super bright lights. So for ISO, it simply means the sensitivity to light. So if you increase your ISO, your camera takes the original light source that your sensor receives and boost it to make it even brighter, as simple as that. Okay, so now how do you actually combine these three elements together when you are shooting? Just simply ask yourself three questions. First, what are you shooting? Are you shooting a fast object, fast moving object, or you're just shooting completely still? So if you're shooting something that is moving, the shutter speed is the first thing that you need to adjust. So the next thing is how much blurness, how much of depth of field that you want to create into your photo. So let's say if you're shooting a product, you want to draw people's attention into your product instead of the foreground as well as the background. So the aperture settings is the next key that you want to adjust. Lastly, look at the viewfinder to find this exposure bar below and see whether is it on the left side or on the right side. If you're on the left side, which means that your photo is still a little bit too dark. And if it's on the right side, means that your photo is too bright. 
So your goal is to make the bar to the center so your photos are correctly exposed. Now is the time for you to bump up your ISO or decrease your ISO. So once you have done adjusting all the settings that you need, congratulations, now you're shooting on manual. You're finally using uh, maybe 80% of your camera's ability to shoot your photos or your videos or whatever you're shooting. So that's it for me today. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or any problems, please leave it down in the comments below. I will help you as much as I can. And if you like this video, please thumbs up to support me. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.